So let's see how we can optimize this performance or even make it better. So first of all, those of you who are, um, have sharp eyes and keen uh, saw that I made a mistake on purpose here. I put the input and the text together with the table. It's the same component, right? If you go back to the uh, code just for a sec. And we go to my uh, amazing input. You see that my render function renders both the input and the p tag and the render table, meaning that the changes from this component, since it's all in the same component, they force the should component update function to be called on this, which doesn't exist for some cases. So this was the um, crucial mistake here, um, but it was just a simple way to uh, have like a stress test to show what can happen uh, in uh, more complex applications. Obviously, so this is the right solution here. We wanna separate the text components completely from the table here. So text changes will just affect the text box and the text, and they won't affect the table at all. Uh, this will probably render the best performance um, for sure. And we'll probably, well, probably, well, for sure we won't see a, a difference between function or class or pure components in this scenario because it doesn't take into effect. It's just the initial render. And since hopefully I didn't screw anything up, they're rendered only once when they load. However, when we're thinking about big applications, not just something silly and small like this, um, this tree, it's not just one, two, three, four, five levels in. It can be huge. If any of you, all of you which are working on production grade applications, know that your um, component trees are much, much, much bigger. You have many branches and leaves and it's, it's huge. And uh, mistakes can be made everywhere and the performance can be really crucial. Um, so I wrote here always prefer pure components and I didn't uh, necessarily just mean class components. Basically we wanna um, keep that uh, pure mindset um, throughout our development process, and I'll show you how you can solve this in the other components as well. Um, so one thing that we can do, first of all, about the class component is we can make it uh, work even better than a pure component. And the reason we can, the way we can do that is if we use um, the should component update and we fulfill it as return false. Basically, this means that once this component renders once, it will not render again, no matter what. And this is really great for performance. It's uh, the holy grail of uh, React performance, you would say, except of uh, doing that separation, which I just said. Um, but you have to be really aware of this, because if uh, your parent component has should component uh, render false, should update false, then everything underneath it will not render as well. Um, like the picture here shows. So you need to be very, very much aware and because this can bring unexpected bugs into your application. So use it with a grain of salt. Um, another thing you can do is you can use React Memo and this goes to the function components. Um, from React 16.6, um, there is a new higher order, higher order component called React Memo. Just out of curiosity, how many people here are on React 16.6 or up? So I think I see like 10 hands. So it's almost nobody because this is really like cutting edge, bleeding edge, and if you're on production grade applications, upgrading a React version, especially from 15 to 16 or even before, it's a lot of work. You have to make sure that you're not screwing things up. You have to roll it out slowly to your users. I know how much time it took in Wix and it, it's complex. Uh, you also need to be ready to roll it back, so it takes a while. You can't uh, automatically bring the new features in. But React Memo, so what does it do? Basically, it's a higher order component, meaning it's a fancy word for a function which wraps around our component. And it gives us the exact same functionality as a pure component. Basically, it makes our function component pure. Um, let's see how this works on the same example we just did with the table with the 400 rows. 
on the function. Let's see how it will look now. Um, okay, so um, let's look at our function table. Um, so this is the function which we are exporting, which basically maps all the employees which we are rendering, the 400 employees. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in another uh, function from uh, React. And it's basically, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, we can, we'll just do it like this. We're going to take this same function and we're going to wrap it with react.memo. And now let's go back to our amazing input. Change it to function. And we have 400. Let's see how it works now. All right. Let's see. All right. So basically, we got the uh, same kind of performance as we did with the uh, pure class components. Um, what you need to make sure, though, is that first, the covets are that you need to be, oops, you need to be on React 16.6 uh, or up, and you have to make sure that you don't forget to wrap new components. This is especially um, can be uh, dangerous, I would say, to new developers which are not familiar with this, and they might miss it, and then their components will re-render all the time. Again, you might not notice it, but Every little thing makes a, a change in performance. 10 milliseconds that you cut here, and here, and here, and here, it, it becomes a lot later. 